All right, so this is part two of the RC car project. And in this video, we're gonna be doing some testing, mainly on the STM32 F4 board. And the goal really here is to just get all the hardware interfaced and connected to this chip, just to make sure that it can all communicate properly and that there will be no problems. And hopefully by the end, I'll have everything hooked up together and we'll be able to test uh, using the transmitter. So the goal is to write some code and set up the chip so that we can control the servo using the steering input here and also control the power delivered to the wheels using the throttle input. So now that we've set up everything in the software in CubeMX, what we can do now is actually set up the development board itself. And these pins um, trace over to some of these board headers. What you can actually do then is interface real hardware like the motors and this board. You can interface those to the actual header pins. And from there you can program them to do whatever you want. And this is where the testing begins, and this is typically where you start out in hardware. You get a development board like this one, interface the hardware, test it, make sure you can do what you want to do. And then from there, all you really need is the chip and everything that comes with the chip that it needs to run. And you can go and create your own custom boards from there. So that's what I'm hoping to do. But for now, we just want to get everything set up, tested, and let's get straight into it. So I've just flashed the code onto the STM32F4. You can see here it's powered by USB, by the flashing little COM port. And now it's ready to test. So all I need to do is deliver power to the H-bridge and the receiver. I can do that by powering on my power supply here. So now if I grab my transmitter and I turn it on, we should see a little red light pop up there on the receiver. And there it is. We also saw a little adjustment there on the servo. And basically that's the code kicking in saying that when the receiver is picked up, we want to center the servo so that the wheels of the car would ideally be straight. And it's not perfect at the minute, obviously, but we're just testing. And this is more a functionality test as opposed to anything sort of fancy. So the main test I wanted to do was to see if I can control the motor and the servo using the transmitter, which is receiving signals through this receiver and coming in through the microcontroller. And the microcontroller is then using those signals to determine an angle for the servo and a power delivery for the motors. So if I use the steering control here on the receiver and you keep an eye on the servo, so if I go right, you can see that's moving there. And if I go left, it also steers. And we can go back and forth quite a bit with that. And you can see it's adjusting. And also if I use the throttle here, so if I start the throttle up, you can see it starts ramping up. And if I go all the way, you can see it reaches top speed. So we, we can also you know, be steering as we're driving. And that's basically the majority of the car, right? We're just going forwards and steering. I haven't yet done going backwards. There's not much to change really. It's just handling it in the code. So I think that's where we'll end this video. I'm pretty happy with the testing and obviously now we can move on to the next stage. The next stage really I think is gonna involve the battery. So obviously right now I'm hooked up to a bench power supply and we're powered by USB here. Obviously when we create the car, that's not gonna be the case. We're gonna need a battery to power the board, which I've already got here. So this is basically just um, two double A's rechargeables. Uh, we can power the board pretty nicely with those. You can power these boards with anything between 1.7 and 3.6 volts, I think. They're relatively low powered, but obviously the motor and the servo will need much higher power and a larger capacity battery. So I think I'm gonna end up building my own battery pack and failing that, I'll just buy a LiPo battery, which are really common for RC cars. So that should be pretty fun. And hopefully you can look forward to that next video. I certainly am. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.